Peace family, I'm outside the National Black Theater. Outside the Comedic Armageddon Conference. I had the pleasure of running into this young brother. Uh, seen you on Sarnetta's channel. He was, had something on astrology, the Bible's based on astrology. And that made me go look at some of you, go to your channel. Look at some of your joint. Got a lot of interesting stuff, brother. This is your first time on my platform. My name Brother Rich. First time I met the brother. Tell the people, what's the overall message you want to deliver to the people in terms of spirituality? Because you have a very interesting perspective or inter uh, interesting approach. What's your, before I get into any questions, what's the overall message you want the black family, the global family out there to know? Peace, peace, brother. Um, first and foremost, much love and positive energy being sent to Brother Rich and his platform and all, all that he has in his cause and effect. Um, my message is straight to the point, it's straight and exact, it's right and exact. It's save yourself. But you have to understand who yourself is. You have three selves. You have a physical self, an emotional self, and a mental self. So when you save yourself, you must save yourself beyond the physical realm. You must touch the spiritual realm. You must touch your highest state of existence, which is your soul, which stems from solar energy, the universe. So the um, number one problem with black people, I would like to say, is we forget that we exist on other levels. The Caucasian has hidden the abilities of melanin to the point that we forget that we even have it. Every day, you walk around black and you forget that you're a melanated being. You're not black. So the point I'm making is we have been so confined and enslaved to just see the physical realm that we forget we're being affected on two other levels of existence, which is emotionally and spiritually. Now, physically, we can clearly see Caucasian killing us in the street. The food is trash. Need I go on? But emotionally and spiritually, we be infected through the white supremacist mentality which is being projected into the minds of melanated, mel melanated beings. As a melanated being you have no business with the mental constructs of a Caucasian. Anything white for you is detrimental to your existence because it's opposite of existence. The Caucasian can't even live within the sunlight but yet you can share the same ideology as someone who can't even exist within the natural environment that you can. So with that being said Spiritually and emotionally, we, we are being damaged. We are being shown mental negative images of ourselves. Everything we hear about ourselves is negative. And the worst part is we have been taught so less of ourselves that we grow up and treat ourselves less of ourselves. So the God concept was once upon a time one with the black race because we were in tune with the spirit, which is eternal, which is you, which is God. This is why you can't see God, because you can't see your soul. So with that being said, the Caucasian has separated us from the spiritual continent or paradigm of existence and forced us to live solely on a physical construct. So by doing so, he has separated you from God because we understand that the physical realm is created by the spiritual realm. So if you forget that the, phys that the spiritual realm exists, then you forgot that God exists, which is your higher self. So in doing so, not only being separated from your higher self, you are being manipulated and molested on the physical manifestations that the Caucasian has created within his demonic psyche and you're trying to live within that paradigm which is just causing you even more pain and agony so now this brings me back to my um original answer my number one message is to the black race is to save ourselves and by saving ourselves but we can do that physically we have no problem doing that we the best football players boxers runners whatever that's not a, even a question when it comes to who's the physical superior entity on the planet earth what i'm saying is we must resave ourselves spiritually and mentally, and that is yet to be done. You have you have so many illusions and roadblocks threw up for black people that it's so hard to actually your pineal gland and your third eye must be in tune to cipher through the bug crap. Like for example, the Caucasian had just set out what I like to call landmines for you to step on. So on the other end of this field, you got to walk is truth. But to get to that truth, you got to walk through a landmine called Christianity. You got to walk through a landmine called Israelite. You got to walk through a landmine called Muslim. You got to walk through a landmine called this, that, and the third, blood, crip. You have so many different set out identities of you given to you by the oppressor that even trying to get to you, you have to get through the other bullshit that he's trying to give to you. So it's really no escape unless you have the divine frequency to be able to vibrate through the obstacles laid. So when it comes to saving ourselves as a um, melanated entity, you cannot save yourself physically if you don't know mentally or spiritually 
how to exclude the Caucasian from your existence. For example, a lot of people don't know, are not even conscious, I should say, when they go and get a cup of water out the sink, they're not conscious that, damn, this has fluoride, I'm getting ready to drink this, and I make my baby's noodles and food out of this same water. And I'm poisoning my child and calcifying their pineal gland. You're not even conscious of this. Why? Because the Caucasian has separated you from your spirit and trapped you on a physical realm. So now they say seeing is believing, but with, with eye, you have a third eye. If you see with the two eyes, then you will always be tricked. You must see with the third eye. So when you see with the third eye, that's not it. I wouldn't even say seeing is believing with that eye. See, that's knowing. Seeing is knowing. So what happened is he has separated us from that eye, that all-seeing eye, which is right here. That pineal gland. And by doing so, he's able to dupe the two physical eyes. He dupes you. And getting back to the point, you go to the grocery store, you buy a GMO. It looked like an orange, tastes like an orange, but this ain't no damn orange. But why did you go for that? Because you don't know that it's not a real orange. Why? Because you don't know what a real orange is. Why? Because you can't tell the difference anymore. You used to could tell the difference of a real orange. Now you can't because you don't even know your real self. Why? Because the Caucasian has hid you from you. And now you go through egotistical constructs, such as, once again, Hebrew, Christianity, Muslim, whatever else you want to name, in search of yourself. Because that has been perverted with yourself. So you found a small piece of you in a lie, and now you just going to hold on to the whole lie because it's the only piece of you you ever had your whole life. So with that being said, we got to save ourselves. And in order to do that, that must be done mentally and spiritually. And that's my message to the people. When you see the landmine, walk around it. Don't step on it. In one of your videos, I heard you say you was dealing with the whole Yakub thing. And you were saying how Yakub, you went through the whole gravitation process. And you were saying how Yakub knew that this earth had to go through a certain negative polarity. Why did we, why, well, what's the use of all this, Pharaoh, from your, from your research? Why we got to go through all this? All that you said, GMOs and all this other shit. Why your higher self got to go through all that shit for, Pharaoh? Okay. Peace, peace, brother. Just to clear you up so people don't, I'm not saying Yakub knew that we had to go through this period. Well, what I'm saying is Yakub played his part in the period that we had to go through in his manifestation. And what that means is for the last 6,000 years, the part of the, um, because what we first must understand is that the, the sun is not complacent. It doesn't stand still and the nine planets orbit around it. The sun travels the universe and pulls the, not, the, um, the nine planets. So it's a difference between rotation and a vortex. A rotation is something sitting on an axis with an object rotating around it. A vortex is a mass body pulling other mass bodies. So our solar system is not in rotation, it's in a vortex. Now with that being understood, understanding that we are traveling around the universe, you can understand that what we call prominences. When the body, like for example, a animals give off pheromones. Whether they want to tell other animal, have sex with me, defense mechanism, it is a scientific fact that we know that the animal, as well as the human, gives off gases that affect the psychological and biological states of other organisms. When this is done on a, a humanoid or an animal level, it's called a pheromone. But when it's done on an astrological level, it's called a prominence. So a prominence is when a planet gives off gases or energies that trickle down into the atmosphere and affect the, psych the psychological and biological activities of the species on that planet. So now with that being said, 6,000 years ago, we travel out of the prominence that was vibrating strong enough for our kundalini to raise and, and push open the pineal gland. Now before I go on, I gotta give you the science. Now you see the, 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 the um, pharaohs, as we can call them, with the um, uraeus on their head. This is the cobra. The reason they put the uraeus on their head is because when the kundalini energy, which you see on the cauticus, um, the um, rear cross blue shield, if I'm saying it wrong, whatever they name it, they stole it and they got the two serpents going up the shield with the wings. Now the staff is your spine. And the two serpents is your kundalini energy, your nature and your nature, your yin yang, your positive, negative, male, female, whatever you want to call it. Those are your duality energies which actually shoot up your spine in that in that um form. And what happens is they come up the um 33rd vertebrae and they push into the pineal gland. The pineal gland actually opens like a door. 
and it swells like the hood of a cobra while being stimulated. So while your pineal gland is swelling, the pituitary gland, which is right under it, is flickering like this. So our ancestors put the cobra on there to let you know when the serpent energy is flowing up the, up the spine, up the chakra successfully, it is stimulating the pineal gland, pushing the pineal gland north, swelling it like the hood of a cobra, and the pituitary gland is flickering like the tongue of a cobra, so they use the cobra to be synonymous with this effect. Now, what this effect has is there's a liquid within the third ventricle of the brain. Once the pineal gland is pushed open by the kundalini energy, the, the liquid within the third ventricle of the brain flows into the fourth ventricle of the brain, stimulates the mind, and activates what we would call psychic kinetic ability. This is where you get clairvoyance, um, telekinesis, all those things that have to do with that. So now getting back to my original point, 6,000 years ago, we moved out of a part of the universe that stimulated us that way. So what happens is, for the last 6,000 years, the melanated race, melanated beings, us, have not been able to raise our kundalini energy up because the universe has not been stimulating us to where the bodies are powerful enough to do so. So now what happens is, in the coming of the Aquarian age, which will be 2034, 19 years from now, we about to get hit with that wave. So now kundalini energy is rising. You got people astro projecting, don't know what the hell is going on. You got psychic kids, you got the government abducting psychic kids and putting them in the CIA and making them find criminals. You got all these kinetic abilities. Motherfuckers is thinking they're going crazy. But what's happening is you getting your powers back. It's like X-Men. You just waking up. And matter of fact, actually the movie X-Men is synonymous with the melanated being coming back into their power because if you look at the majority of X-Men, they're who? Teenagers. They're teenagers. They're youth. And they don't know what's happening to them. They just know one day I woke up and I lifted some shit up. Now this sounds crazy to someone who is not past a certain chakra frequency. So what we have to understand is, in taking it back to Kemet, the Greeks who were students of our ancestors quoted in their own history and documents that if you read the um, Stolen Legacy book, I can't get the exact page, but it's quoted in there by George James that a Greek philosopher stated, the comedic priests seem to have what is known as supernatural powers. They were able to manipulate the elements at will. So now this comes back into, at this time, as you can see, Kemet. Uh, civilizations like Sumeria were 4,000, 5,000, 6,000 years old, going back into when we started moving out of that celestial continent that gave us that power, that vibration. So our ancestors still retained some of that ability. So now when you look at the black mel or the melanated being today and you say, well, why you can't do what your ancestors did? Because they had a little more juice than me back then. But now I'm getting that juice back. And you about to see the ancestor. This is why they say we are our ancestors. We just waiting for the universe. Well, we were waiting for the universe to present us the moment to show you. So the moment is here. Um, and get ready. And the reason a lot of people can't fathom this or tap into their frequency is because you allow the Caucasian to vibrate your body at a low frequency by eating low frequency foods such as meat most of y'all is on medication you're doing drugs popping molly and i'm young i used to be in the street so i i know what it is so with that being said if you want to raise your vibration you must electrify yourself and i do mean electrify anything peace brother anything that's of high of high um intensity or velocity is electrified. The more voltage you add to something, the more powerful it becomes. So when you keep eating low frequency foods, you lower in your voltage. But when you eat an alkaline diet, you make yourself more electrical. You're an electrical current. So now this, this allows for what stimulation? The most kundalini stimulation. Your kundalini can't get no juice if you're eating pork chops. It don't get no juice. But if you eat an alkaline diets, now that gives your body more power to flow the energy up your spine. So with that being said, that is my um my message to the people. What's up, brother? Question? Yeah, I got a question, bro. Huh, come on up, come on in. You talk okay, about right. you talk about alkaline foods a lot. I, w I just wanted you to give me like like cause I wanna get my Kundi Lini out there, feel me? So right. I wanna eat right. Feel me? <laughs> so what what is a list of foods that you could give me or a list of foods that I could eat to bring up my Kundalini? Okay. Now I'm gonna tell you exactly how to answer your own question, the way I did it. I am no alkaline food specialist because I was not manifested in that area mentally. So I have been teaching myself through the master, Dr. Sebi. So now, if you wanna know something, you go to the person who knows it the best, it's puzzle pieces. So you can do exactly what I did. 
go study Dr. Sebi's recipes, buy them, eat them, and watch them work on you. So if you want me to tell you, name you 20 alkaline foods off the cap, I can't do it. But I got a list in my phone that got about 50 recipes that I have in my fridge right now. So I'm going to kick you to that to the master of that realm, alkaline diet. I know the science behind the alkaline diet and how it affects the body, but as far as you want me to give you a meal plan, go to the man who is producing the meal plans where I'm getting mine from, which is Dr. Sebi. So you can go on Google, type in Dr. Sebi recipes or alkaline foods. If you type in alkaline foods, it's gonna take you to Dr. Sebi. And you don't gotta just buy from his website. You can go to um wh any Whole food store with your list like this, boom, and go cop everything. Tell me recipes and stuff. What are the In terms of this existence, Pharaoh, it seems as though everybody down here, when we do some shit, we do it to to generate a feeling. If I'm having sex, I want to feel something. If I buy that car, I want to I want to feel good. If I when I buy clothes, I want to generate a feeling. When I dance, when I listen to music, I want to generate a feeling. It's not the actual object that I'm looking for. It's that feeling that I want to generate. So when that object, when that car don't generate that feeling for me no more, that shit is useless for me. I want a new one. With that being said, brother, you talk about, you brought up the, you know, uh, you talk about a little history of the Caucasians before. Why does it seem as though, and not just dumb, but why does it seem as though some people could, they, they say that they, some people need to do shit like bungee jump, just to, just to feel alive. Some black women, man, all they got to do is make a good meal at home and feed their family, and they feel, they, 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 and that's it for them. They feel alive. They feel good. Why does it take so much for some people to generate that feeling? Some people, they could do some simple shit and generate that feeling. Okay, now the feeling you're talking about is what we can classify as the Eureka feeling. And this is the feeling you get. Like Eureka, like, oh, I learned that. Or, oh, I like them shoes. Or, oh, I like that shirt. Oh, I like that hat. So now, well, we want to label the Eureka feeling, but first of all, we got to distinguish ourselves from the Caucasian. Now, we know that the Caucasian has a calcified pineal gland, which means even if his kundalini energy does shoot up his spine, if he has any, it won't never push the door open. His door is sealed. So now, with that being said, the Caucasian cannot actually feel vibrations they cannot actually feel the entire electromagnetic spectrum they can only see the visible light section of the electromagnetic spectrum so now if you ask me why do caucasians do shit like skydive bungee jump because they are trying their hardest to get some type of stimulation inside because they don't feel nothing because without melanin you can't conduct a certain amount of electricity and this is why some caucasians actually don't even have a soul so now with that being said, now when we go to the, um, the melanated being or in America, what we call the African-American or the Negro, the Negro is constantly searching outside themselves to get that eureka feeling because they have been manipulated mentally to project their, their energy outward and taught that that which is external will feed them internal. When actually it is that which is internal which creates the external. So the thought process of the average melanated person in America after being indoctrinated under Western civilization or any type of Caucasian mental influence is backwards, is reversed. So for example, you do not value yourself as a melanated being because we know for a fact that um, every chemical element that exists within the universe exists within a black person. So let's just use gold for example. Within my flesh right now I have gold. But if I'm not conscious of that, I'm going to go seek that gold chain over there. And when I get the gold chain and put it on, I'm going to feel like, oh, I'm icy. But I was already icy because the element is in my flesh. So with that being said, the mentality of the melanated being is reversed. And this goes back to the first section of this interview. Save yourself. Save your mental self. You, the Caucasian does not have the melanated standpoint is you. So he seeks outside himself for stimulation. And by you allowing him to mentally and spiritually penetrate you and educate you, you now seek outside yourself for something that, that you came out the womb with. So now to answer your question, when you say, why do black people seek that stimulation of cars, clothes, and all of that? Because the Caucasian has taught you to forget that it's in you. Everything on my wrist, this is not a fake watch. Everything on this wrist, I understand is within me. If I drop this watch and break it right now, I'm not going to be upset because I understand I got the watch right here. So, is that why you attracted to that? Because it's already in you? No, to tell you the truth, I've had this watch since I was 16 doing things I shouldn't have been doing. And I just so happen to keep up with things, so I still have it. But I can say that 
we are attracted to what our minds have been captured or, or, or captivated by. For example, some, some, the, the black community is being swayed by BET. We're being swayed by the hip hop culture. So we captivated to everything that comes with that. Money, clothes, women, and mansions. But if I'm a nerd and I'm a gamer, I don't care about that. I probably won't take a shower. I'll probably just play Halo all day. I'm captivated by that. So when it comes to saying what are we attracted to, we're attracted to by whatever our mind has been captivated by. So when it comes to black people, our original source of captivation was knowledge of our spiritual self. The physical things are just a complement of our spiritual self. It's a difference between saying I want gold everywhere because I never had nothing versus I'm a god and I am the highest form of existence so my environment must exist in the most highest form so that is why I put gold everywhere. It's a difference between the mental intention. So once again we come back to who is influencing your psyche. Your psyche. So now we must Eliminate the Caucasian in order to reach purity because I'm not saying that we don't deserve nice things Everybody deserves the best of the best. You don't drink sewer water. You drink good water. You don't want Rubbles and rocks you want crystals and diamonds and things like that So with that being said we have to eliminate the devil from within the realm of God So it's nothing wrong with having a beautiful woman but do you want a beautiful woman because you want to just say I got the baddest female on the block or do you want a beautiful woman because you want somebody who compliments you mentally and you can build her mentally as well so now you can make her be able to transcend the physical realm that she has been captured on which only seeing herself as a divine flesh instead of a divine soul and mental so we can have great things because I'm gonna have great things as so long as I can but what we want to eliminate is the evil intent within the mist so it's just like do you drink wine to feel good or are you an alcoholic laid out on the street because you're trying to run away from pain? So it, it's, it's not the action, it's the intent. It's like killing. So it's like, you can say killing is wrong, but if somebody run in my house and they don't belong, I'm going to kill them. Self-defense. Animals do it. The, you get too close to the sun, you get incinerated. So if I feel threatened by any extraterrestrial object, I'm going to use a natural trait, which is killing. So what it is, is is not the act, it's the intention. Are you just saying, I'm about to take your land and rape everybody and kill? If so, go over there with the Caucasian. But if you want to be a righteous individual, you only use the principle when the time calls for it. Because the power of God is to know the cause and effect. Because once you know the cause and effect, you control the physical realm. For example, I know if I throw this mic on the ground, it's going to break. So by my knowledge of that, I don't throw the mic on the ground. But if I'm not conscious to what's going to happen when I throw this mic, then I can lose my train of thought and get mad and throw it. A lot of people do make life decisions unconsciously. You might get mad and slap your girl and then you realize, damn, babe, I slapped you. But now you got a domestic violence case because you wasn't conscious. You wasn't aware of the law of cause and effect at that time. Doesn't mean you dumb. It just means your consciousness has been separated from you physically. So now going back to the basis or the um, premises of this bill, we must merge the soul or the third eye, the mind, whatever you want to call it, Allah, G, whatever you want to call it, back with the physical shell in order to fluctuate in both realms. Because if you don't, the Caucasian will always maneuver, he will always manipulate, he will always be able to maneuver, and you won't never see the jab coming when it's coming. One question from this one. Go on, Kevin. Yo, brother. What's up? My name's Jesus Christ. I'm all over um, Facebook. Um, I was building with Sarnetta the other day. He told me to meet you and all that. Peace, brother. Peace, What's going peace, on, man? Um, and I seen your video. The shit was good. Thank you. I want to ask you a question, though, because I'm, I'm the dude on, face, on Facebook. I basically tell everybody, you don't need books, and you don't need to listen to other men to get knowledge. And a lot of people give me flack for that. So I want to know what you think on that. Well, I'm going to back you up. Why do I need books? And I'm going to back you 100%. I'm about to breathe dragon fire on, who, on whoever thou shall come. So with that being said, we understand that the DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, the DNA, black people, we have 12 strands of DNA in a pin size. Oh, a oh, pin. I don't want to cut you off. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I don't want to cut you off. Explain, explain to me why. All right, a brother asked me if I don't um, if I don't get my information from books or another man, then who do I get them from? I'm gonna tell you right now. Now, answering your question using DNA, brother. So your answer is DNA? No, I'm finna, both. I'm gonna answer your question and why. Now, why you technically don't need a book is because intelligence and memory is passed on through DNA. You don't just get physical traits, you get mental traits. If you don't believe me, everybody in the hood, including me, didn't have no father. 
But I guarantee your grandma said, boy, you act just like your dad. You ain't never even seen your daddy. So the mentality, so the mental construct of it is DNA passes on information. So you reading, exactly. So you reading something, you, you looking for a book, you looking for validation in a book that's already inside your genetic book. Now going back to DNA, we understand that a pin size of DNA is five, it holds. If, if you could turn a, a pin size of your DNA into a library, it would be able to hold 500 more times the book in equal, in equal measurement from planet Earth from our distance to the moon. So that means you will have 500 times the books in that mass size library, which would be 500 more times larger than here to the moon. So now going back to the brothers build on why we don't need books. I cut you off. Go ahead. You ain't answering my question. So I'm gonna give you another question. Do you, cause I don't have a master teacher. Right. You think I need a master teacher? No, all you need is a mirror and common sense. Woo. I don't need a master okay, teacher to I tell have, me water is wet. A, if I have a question about life and death, where am I going to get that from then if I don't have a master teacher or a book or a man to ask? I'm going to tell you. I don't need none of that. I'm going to tell you right now. Have you ever. I need a quick answer. Have you ever. Okay, I'm going to tell you right now. Have you ever killed the fly? Yeah. Did you ever realize that that fly was alive? Yeah, that's And you realize that you killed the fly, right? Uh -huh. That was your lesson on life and death. But I ain't learned nothing. If I transgress, because you're not using your mind, I'm going to tell you the lesson right now. I'm going to tell you the lesson right now that you missed. When it comes to being conscious, this is my point. When your soul is separated from your physical, you don't understand what you're doing. To the average person, it's just, oh, it's a fly. Bang. So your lesson is, your lesson between life and death is, I have the power to cause this and I have the power to not cause this. So when you're conscious, you understand that this fly is a biological entity. It's a sentient being and I need not transgress on the life expectancy of this entity. So now what you're saying is your lesson between life and death, that is around you every day. But the, the mind is just not activated to see it. For example, when you walk, you, you step on ants, you kill life. You don't even realize you're doing it because you're not conscious. So now when it comes back to... Oh, you want to know what happens after death? If I got a question about what happens when a person die, and I don't have no book or man or, uh, or any of that to ask, how do I find out the answer? All right, I'm going to tell you right now how I found out the answer. Okay. All right, I'm going to give you the answer. After death, all you have to do, all you have to do, all you, I'm going to tell you right now, all you have to do to learn about life after death is reverse the process. How did you get here? Because that's how you leaving. So now, I astral project. I don't know if you astral project, but I astral project. But I'm not even going to go there on you. I'm going to answer your question. Yeah, no, so now, so don't even feel right, right, right. So to answer your question, is there life after death? Yes. No, I'm saying, you saying, how do I know about life after death? So now my answer would be, right, I'm finna tell you right now. The same way, the same way you get the, no, it, it wouldn't only be the answer, bro. You would listen. The answer to, the answer to, is there life after death? You would have to reverse the, you would have to reverse the process. The soul was not in the body when it came out the womb. So that means if you asking me, how did I get the answer to is there life after death? Because you were already living a non-physical life before you came into the physical plane. So now if you just use your common sense and say, damn, well, I know I came here through a vessel. Then I know when I leave, I must be going back to where I came. So it's kind of just analyzation of yourself. Just reverse. Everything has an opposite. So that's like saying, how do I get up? Well, damn it, I see it's a down. How do I know it's life after death? Because I know I wasn't always here. I came here. So that means upon death, I must be going back to where I came. So it's just a simple, it's just a simple, sometimes you got to step back. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you can't, you got to get off the field and you got to go on the sideline and say, uh-uh, coach, they in this defense. But you don't see it when you want to join. So when you in life, and somebody got a, and you going through things, you don't see, damn, where am I going after death? You on the physical realm. But when you step out the physical realm and get on the sideline and, and look at it from the spiritual point of view, you say, damn, well, I was over here. I came into this body here. I was 80 years old. And when I get to about 81, I'm going to naturally pass and I'm going to go back to where I came. It's a cycle. Can I answer? Go ahead. All right. I don't know about the rest of y'all. And this ain't to discredit you in no way, but I don't feel like I got an answer. And when I'm talking to a lot of brothers, I don't never feel like I'm getting the answer. Now, when the brother asks me if I don't have no books or master teacher to tell me answers on things, how do I get my answers? I told him, before men had books that they wrote, men taught men, right? right? Spirits. Entities Before taught men. men taught men, no. then men wrote, hold on, all right, men taught men, me, got you, got you, no, got you, men taught men, and then men wrote books for other men to learn, but before that, men learned from the earth, 
So if I got a question about life or death, all I got to do is look at a caterpillar. If I got questions about what can unity do for me, all I got to do is look at a building. I don't got to look at no book. I don't got to do what you did. I could simple I answers. I simple answers. Oh. We got to start giving the people simple answers. Because half the niggas ain't going to understand what you said. Real you talk. Not? But, but Farrell, you're dealing a lot with um, astral proje projection and you're talking about these concepts. You seen the movie Interstellar? Damn, I was about to. In terms of your higher self, are you somewhere? Because when you. Some people say, I astral project, I left my body. Then some people say, I'm already outside the body, I'm already there. So I don't have to leave the body to go there because I'm already there. I'm there projecting myself down here. So do we have it backwards with astral projection where we think we're astral projecting there, but in reality we're there astral projecting down here? That's exactly what it is. The Caucasian has reversed your train of thought. We think that the Caucasian has taught you that you have to go to heaven. But our ancestors understood that we come from heaven. So now with that being said, you are not on earth trying to get out of the planet. You out of the planet learning how to live on earth. So with that being said, what you must do is you must have balance, alchemy. The three wisdoms of, of our ancestors were what? Um, alchemy, astrology, and thurgy. Alchemy is turning um, lead into um, gold, which is just metaphorical for turning a dull spirit into a gold spirit. Because once you're, all your chakras, which are the colors of the rainbow, are fully vibrant, they turn gold, just like the sun is gold. So now you have astrology, which is the study of celestial bodies and how they interact with you, which will go back to my earlier statement on prominences. And then you have thurgy, which is what we can conceptualize as rituals, which will be how to invert the, invoke the first two. So those were the three wi ancient wisdoms taught in the sacred schools by our ancestors. So now bringing that back, those wisdoms were taught to do what? To learn how to keep your ethereal body constantly in tune and operating while in the physical body. Because I'll give you an example. A lot of people just walk up the street. And then trip over something and then be like, damn, bro, I didn't even see that right there. Because you wasn't conscious, you wasn't using your soul to see. You was just in the matrix. You was physically operating solely on a physical realm. But when you conscious, you can walk and feel. You can feel your way. You can, you can, you can, you can, you can close your eyes right now and take five steps and be like, damn, it's something in front of me. Because you conscious, you're using your mind. So what you want to do is you want to learn how to never cut that off. Because sometimes it goes off. Like right now I could be talking and somebody can come over here and say the wrong thing to me. And I'd be like, motherfucker, what you say? I just lost my consciousness that fast. So what you want to do is you want to make your soul so present and so strong that nothing can shake it. Not a gunshot, not a bomb, not a slick comment, not something you about to trip over. And it's so present that the physical realm is always being felt by your magnetic field. Because your magnetic field stretches out farther than your body and feels everything physical before you come in contact with it. So the point I'm trying to make is we got to understand we are in these bodies learning how to operate within them because your true highest self is too big to fit in this body. So the, all the energy that you have stuffed in this shell, which we call a soul, you must learn how to operate that sufficiently on this realm while here. Because we all know when you astral project, you don't feel no pain. You go anywhere you want to go. You fly around. You do all of that. But when you're in the body, your ass ain't flying around. And you ain't going through. You ain't going where you want to go. So what you want to do is you want to learn how to come to terms with that half of yourself and this half of yourself and merge them and be able to express yourself at your most highest velocity. Well, we live, we live in like an ADD culture now where... You know, it's real hard to concentrate right now. You was, you was talking about being conscious and being focused and being able just to feel your way through. It's like you can't, a person can't even concentrate on one single thing for 10 minutes, for five. If you tell them to meditate, they be like, oh, shit, I can't sit down that long still, man. And this is the last question before we wrap it up. Give the people some techniques they could do just to be better at concentrating or be better at focusing their attention so they could be better manifestors in life. All right, answer your first question. Most people can't concentrate because you've been drinking fluoride water your whole damn life and you got a calcified pineal gland. So, for one, you got to clean up the physical body. If you want, that's like a computer. What, what happens when your computer get dust in the back? Shit get to running slow, the fan get to blowing all crazy. Same thing with your body. You putting all kind of foreign um, entities and, and elements in the body and then you want it to operate on its best, on its best level of uh, mechanics? No. 
But my number one advice for people who want to meditate and want to better themselves is stop being fucking lazy and actually want to do it. I don't have no other advice for that. It's you have to want to do it. I can't come and bless you and put anointed oil in your head and say you're going to meditate. No, you have to get your ass up, cut empire off, and go sit down and think for a minute. So it's like if we in school, if you ask me what's the best advice to pass this test, motherfucker, go study. You ain't going to study if you don't want to, because I don't do shit I don't want to do. So I can speak from first-hand experience of not doing shit I don't want to do. Most melanated people in America have been taught to not do what is good for them. You tell a motherfucker, right, you go find a motherfucker anywhere on the corner with a salad. And tell them, here, brother, take a bite. They're going to say, I don't eat that. That's not, I don't eat peas and I don't eat vegetables. Go, go buy a motherfucking steak, hoagie, and be like, yo, taste this shit. Niggas going to be like, let me get a piece, bro. Because you, you taught to kill yourself. You don't want to do what's not good for you. People smoke cigarettes. You clearly see that that's killing you. You seen the commercial, she got the hole in her neck, but you still smoking because you've been programmed to self-destruct. So now my number one and only realest answer I can give you is you want to have to change. There is no book. There is no scripture. There is no nothing that's going to influence you to change but you. You have to get sick of this shit. You have to just get sick. It's like a female in an abusive relationship. Your man keep beating you, you're going to stay there until you want to get out. You can make all the excuses about he's sorry, he ain't mean to do it, and it's going to keep happening. Until you finally say, I don't want to be in this relationship no more and leave, it doesn't change. It's the same state of the black race. Until we wake up and we say we're sick of this shit, and we actually want to meditate, we want to get back into our spiritual selves, and we want to purify ourselves physically, mentally, and emotionally, we not. There is, other than that, there is no answer. You have to want to do it first. Willpower, the fifth chakra. Leave your contact info, brother. My contact info on my Facebook is Sandra Bland. YouTube is Pharaoh Ala. Um, if you want to book me, I do lectures. I do all of that speaking, all of that. It's um, Young Pharaoh Booking at gmail.com. I'm going to make me an Instagram, so the next time you see me on a God Journal, I will have that Instagram contact for you. But those are my three um, priority contacts right there. Facebook, Sandra Bland. YouTube, Pharaoh Ala. You want to book me for a lecture, a uh, um, speech, whatever you want to do, it's youngpharaohbooking at gmail.com. And that's the contact, family. Peace.